Already traders, good afternoon and welcome. It is Friday, October 20th, 2023. Let's get into the trading account today and let's get into uh, the markets and see exactly what happened in the session today. Uh, pretty interesting session to begin with. Uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, you didn't even see me the whole time here, but let's just take a look at the chart. So let's jump into SPY. Uh, we were down about 1.2% on this session in SPY, finishing at the lows of the day. So uh, I think it's even worse in the aftermarket, uh, after hours time frame here. But you can see here on the weekly, we've had this long-term uptrend in place, touched it a couple times, quick peek down and back up uh, one week. And then finally this week, breaking this uptrend line. Now, one week, not you know, going to make a, a huge bit of difference. Okay. But this long-term uptrend that we've been in since September, really October of last year, October 10th of last year, uh, we've been up uh, in this market and we are finally breaking the trend line. Uh, I think that's a pretty significant trend line. Uh, we remain in this also this bearish trend within the bullish trend, but now breaking below that which is a fairly bearish sign in my opinion on the weekly here macd has been falling rsi is falling breaking the 50 heading lower uh, markets are just in a bearish mode on the weekly if we take a look at the daily charts here we have been in this uh you know daily drop you know dropping range here lower low lower high lower low lower high and now heading back towards potentially what might be another uh, lower low. We'll see what happens on this, but uh, you know, next stop down here, probably around the 415 mark or so, uh, potentially next week. Now you've got MACD dropping, breaking below the zero line. Uh, you, you know, so you have a MACD crossover here, and an RSI just heading lower. We also broke through. Now it's just one day, but we did break the 200 MA as well on the daily. We're two days into a PSAR bull, bearish reversal here. Uh, the 21 starting to fall further below the 50. So lots of ugly looking stuff uh, here on the daily chart. I'm going to get rid of this uh, upward channel. You know, I'll leave the, that channel alone for now. But uh, not a lot of good looking stuff on SPY. Let's take a look at the Qs. Uh, same type of thing. We have this long-term uptrend. We finally broke that trend line. Uh, a little while ago uh, on on it, but not not terribly. So we've been in this falling wedge channel, uh, if you were, getting tighter and tighter. But uh, after bouncing up here, hitting the top of the channel, breaking back down, you got MACD and RSI falling on the daily. You got MACD and RSI falling in the weekly. And the weekly broke the 50, which is never a really good sign. Uh, last time it broke the 50, uh, we dropped from about 322 all the way to 258. So it was a pretty significant drop last time. We'll see what happens. But if we can't hold this channel and the wedge breakout is below, I think you got some significant potential problems uh, here in tech land, even with earnings coming up. We look at the IWM, uh, getting into this one, uh, just taking a look at uh, how this thing looks overall. Uh, on the weekly, we've been talking about it just bouncing up and down inside this range. But more recently uh, here, this channel to the downside has been significant uh, to watch. And we are now down back to the bottom of this channel uh, again. So we're watching what's going on uh, in the IWM. But this is a pretty weak looking uh, chart. MACD never took a break. It's just been heading lower. RSI just heading lower uh, so this escalator, you know, is down, is not stairs. This is an escalator down uh, on IWM. If we look at the weekly, got MACD crossover again, breaking below uh, the zero line on the histogram. That's heading lower on MACD. We're heading lower towards oversold territory. So I guess that's the one thing you got going for you a little bit on IWM is you're heading into oversold territory, but you're not there yet. And once you get into it, who knows how long every time we've gotten into it we have had a little bounce uh and then we resume the downtrend on those bounces so we'll see what happens here uh this thing's kind of just hanging out in the middle of nowhere uh so we'll see what happens on 
uh, IWM, but we definitely never filled this gap that's up here. That's a thing of the past for now. Uh, we're just heading down on IWM. A uh, number of uh, percentage of stocks below their or above, I should say, their 50-day moving average has dropped again. Now it's down to 15%. So one of the lowest readings that we have seen uh, in some time. We're matching the lows back from March. Uh, and if this continues lower, uh, it is potentially a good reversal sign. But right now, MACD, RSI, they're just heading lower. Uh, now the weekly running out of some downward momentum. So that's something to watch. It's the third week in a row where we've seen MACD starting to try to turn to the upside. So maybe slowing down might be a good sign. Uh, however, only 15% of the stock. So from a kind of an inverse relationship, that's actually a somewhat bearish or bullish uh, signal. And then uh, put call ratio pretty much unchanged on the session, but the moving average is moving a bit higher. If we look here, uh, and get into the put call with the 10-day moving average. That moving average getting back to crossing above here. Uh, when we cross above and start to flip back over, usually the markets get a little bit of a bounce, but this thing just never got going to the downside. Puts are strong. The put call ratio is above one. That's still right now a bearish sign until we kind of get oversold and then start to bring back down here, so we we want to see this uh, that we had back here, where we crashed back down, and then we just kept dropping until we got to an oversold level. Okay, then once we get to that oversold level, okay, then the markets start to sell off. But the markets rise typically when we get to these overbought's and drop. We did get to the overbought, which was you know fairly bullish, and then we really got no momentum to the downside. Puts are in control. Going back here, taking a look at the VIX as well. Uh, VIX moved up to 21 on the session today. So VIX continues uh, to really push the top of this channel. Nothing major here, but uh, up to 21. So volatility doing its thing uh, in here. So you've got a nice little uptrend going. Volatility is moving up. Great for us as premium sellers. Take a look at the uh, dollar. And we've been talking about this tight uptrend this consolidation range. So we've been in this yellow consolidation box for a while. That did not change today. Uh, we remain uh, pretty solidly uh, inside that range today. However, we're getting further and further from the channel. So two ways to break it is just break it to the downside or just break it sideways as the channel uh, ended here, which could now potentially be a resistance level to the upside. MACD, slightly negative. RSI heading lower, hasn't broken the 50 yet. Uh, and we haven't broken below the 50 since way back here uh, in what, the uh, beginning of July on the dollar. So where were we on July was uh, really the, kind of these lows. Uh, so I think this was around July 6th uh, or so. So really this was the lows when we finally, you know, hit those, uh, hit that area. Uh, and we fell lower. So July 6th, right around this whole area where we dropped. We'll see what happens, but uh, man, we are moving lower, accelerating potentially, really just a sideways action, but that's been pretty good for Forex for us. Uh, TLT, another uh, just another down session. It actually was up fractionally on the day, but after the giant drop yesterday, it just remains down here Uh and we are not oversold at all on RSI. Now, we are rising on RSI. Uh, and something to look at is, let's take a look at this trend on RSI. Okay, so while we've been trending down on TLT, RSI is not hitting lower lows. That could be a positive development for people. I'm not telling you to go out and mortgage your houses and buy TLT here. I continue to sell naked puts on bond futures. That's my way of playing this bottoming area here until we see something that gives us any sign that we are reversing higher. Uh, but we're right at this trend line. Uh, but downtrending on the stock, MACD falling, RSI has been falling recently, but 
you are off of the, you know, with these new lows, RSI is not establishing new lows. So that is a positive on TLT if you want to put something out there on it. And then if we take a look at the 10-year treasury, okay, we finally did not hit another high today. We actually uh, sold off on the session. So early in the session, we hit as high as uh, 49.93, and then we closed at 49.24. So uh, the 10-year giving back a little bit here. Uh, MACD still strong on the daily, still strong on the weekly. Uh, still a little overdone, but could be a positive if we start to tip over here. If the you know if you know five here on the 10 year is the max level we're going to get to and we start to level out or drop from here that's going to be good for bonds overall and i think it'll help the markets if we start to get some easing of interest rates so dollar easing and then potentially rates easing a little bit in here a uh, quick look at the futures we'll run through these quickly on um, aussie dollar down on the session today continues to fall fairly weak even though the dollar was down uh, it didn't fall a lot, you know, only down 0.2%. Uh, however, uh, British pound up on the session, Canadian dollar up on the session, uh, 6E, which is the euro up on the session, remains in this pretty tight consolidation range here, but trying to break over the 21. I do like what I'm seeing on 6E. We're about to break potentially above the 50 mark, which is my magical spot here. That could get things rolling. Last time we did that, okay. Uh, it was only a, like a one or two day move, uh, but that really kick started things uh, off back in here as we rose from about 107 up to about 112 uh, on that move. So coming off of this oversold all the way back to the overbought uh, area here, we moved up from you know about 106 to 112. So that's a pretty good move. We'll see if 6E can continue to do that as dollar is weakening or moving sideways. It's a good sign for the euro. Uh, we have a 112, or I'm sorry, we have a strangle in the euro. Uh, that's doing well. It's up 22% in 38 days. Pretty happy with that. All right, bonds. We already covered the uh, bonds, but we'll cover the bond futures here. Uh, we did move up on the session here, bouncing off the top of this kind of oversold area. Uh, again, downtrend on bonds as of late. Okay, but during that same time period, okay, we've got a divergence in RSI, which is moving, which is not making new lows. Again, I think that's very telling, something to work at, both the divergence on the weekly and the daily. I'm not signaling the all clear on bonds, but I will continue to sell uh, naked puts on bonds here. We've got two of them running uh, right now, so I like where we are on bonds. All right, oil. This has been the uh, the exciting one for a couple of days here. Uh, oil on the weekly continues to move its way higher, even though MACD is dropping, RSI has been dropping a bit. So this kind of the sideways drop move here, and then we're breaking out of this consolidation range to the upside yesterday, back down to the top of it today. MACD is rising, RSI is rising as well as this thing uh, is moving up. So we still have some momentum behind CL. However, on oil, if we look at the volatility on oil, we did spike to a, a, a new recent high this morning, and then we pulled way back, closing at the lows. So we recovered a lot of yesterday's up move, big bearish candle uh, on here today, finishing lower. Got MACD trying to roll over, maybe slowing down. RSI starting to head down from overbought. I think that's a good sign. Uh, it was something we wanted to see here uh, and give me another reason to sell naked puts. So I sold one this morning. Uh, so that puts gives us two naked puts along with two strangles, two 112 trades. I'm really playing a lot of oil here a couple of different uh, ways. Um, our strangles are down a fraction. Our 112s are both up decently and our naked puts are up over 10% together. Uh, so that's looking good. And then if we take a look at gold futures here as well today, big up week. You know, you broke through this downtrend line, big breakout week, bullish uh, PSR reversal on the weekly, MACD heading higher, RSI breaking the 50, moving higher, good momentum in gold. 
that continued today. Gold continued to just head up. Like MACD is just flying. Uh, and RSI is flying all the way now, MACD, into an overbought region. Now, it can stay there and we can continue to climb. But you are above. And this is today was way above the three ATR. I want to see this thing probably pull. Yeah, yesterday was above. Today, it got even further above. It did finish off of its highs. You know, will we pull back in and then head back down to maybe the 21, uh, top of the Bollinger Band here, top of the three ATR, see if we can get a, uh, a move of gold back into the mid 1900s or so, 1940s, 1930s, something along that line. And if we take a look at gold volatility, just like oil volatility, this was down 4% today as well. Off of its highs for the week and not setting a new high for the week. And then over here, you can see we did move up to new highs near the three ATR again. And then for the second straight day, third straight day, hitting the three ATR back in. So every time we've broken above it or hit it, we have backed off a bit, even though we just continue to march. Uh, but it's nice to see this thing dropping back in a bit. MACD, one candle doesn't make it. Uh, RSI is heading lower. So something else on gold here. RSI pretty much flat, uh, but if you're looking at recent here, and this is just the last couple of sessions, uh, as we're looking at the same piece here, you've been moving higher on gold volatility while the MACD is dropping. If you're looking overall at gold, uh, the same thing is not happening here, but I like the fact that the volatility is diverging from the move uh, so I think if we could definitely get some uh, some pullback on gold here in the volatility, which would be perfect for us. Uh, we did put a strangle on during this high volatility uh, range. So we do like that. In fact, that strangle is now up 7% in seven days already. So gold strangles looking good, like where we are on gold. Uh, all right. So let's uh, get out of futures, take a quick look at the sectors today. Let's just look at what was moving the markets. And XLK was the leading sector to the downside. MACD, RSI dropping. Tech does not look good, dropping 1.7%. XLY also dropping. You got Amazon and Tesla both heading lower. Uh, Amazon, not enough to keep this moving. Amazon getting dragged down with a pretty ugly day today. So Amazon and Tesla heading lower. You're breaking below uh, this support level here. MACD, RSI falling uh, ugly, 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 breaking the 200 on XLY. Communications, same thing, uh, falling down, MACD, RSI dropping. Energy, down day today, a pullback day. Uh, really nothing significant. You know, RSI has been moving up with this move up, so not really seeing a major divergence uh, yet. Uh, but the weekly is starting to tip over. So, you know, will this previous price level here around 94 and XLE, is that going to hold? Again, if you think oil might be topping a bit here and volatility, we'll see what happens. Uh, XLF down 1.5%. This thing is just getting rocked, hitting uh, this previous support level uh, in here, which is actually filling. You know, we already filled this gap once, uh, but we're back down to this previous support level. MACD RSI falling, nothing good there. And then the worst sectors... Um, Actually, it wasn't giving you the worst sectors. Not sure why. Um, okay. Um, let's look at some of the worst ones here. Uh, semiconductors just getting smashed in here. RSI, MACD heading lower with the markets. Uh, KRE, your regional banks had the breakout of this trend, okay, of this wedge. And now you're right back inside the wedge. So complete failed breakout. Uh, on this one, this could get a little bit more ugly. So regionals not looking too hot uh, in here. So there's where you are on some of the sectors. Taking a look at some stocks. Uh, Amazon down 2.5%. Bad looking day on Amazon. MACD, RSI, both falling weekly, daily. Both breaking the 50 here on the weekly and had already broken the 50 on the daily. That's some momentum to the downside. I uh, do not like uh, what we're seeing here on Amazon. So we'll keep an eye on that, but that trend channel 
100% intact on that. Apple down one and a half percent today. MACD, RSI continuing to fall daily and weekly. PSAR bearish reversal today. Uh, there's bearish moves in all of tech land here. Uh, Microsoft, same thing, down 1.4% today. So it had a breakout of this channel. And even though it's holding up decently, MACD and RSI are dropping. Now, RSI has not broached 50, or it did today, 49.82. Uh, let's actually draw that in so we have a better chance to see uh, what's happening uh, here in Microsoft. But Microsoft breaking the 50 line to the downside uh, here on RSI. No bueno. Don't like the looks of that uh, on Microsoft. Now, earnings haven't come out yet, so that can change anything. But right back down, yet momentum to the downside picking back up. Will this previous channel top that we broke out of, will that act as support? And can we get a bounce off of it? Bearish PSR reversal today on that one as well. Meta's already had that bearish PSR reversal. And even though Meta's come back down and had another ugly day today, dropping over a percent, MACD, RSI, both dropping lower, looks bad. Let's see if we get any support here or potentially here on this previous support line. We'll see if either one of these comes into play. I could probably take this one off now and just really rely on this previous support level uh, in here. We'll see how that holds up or if this 50 holds. Bollinger Bands, it widened on that move. Now they're consolidating a bit as we get back to the middle uh, on this. We'll wait and see what happens with Meta with earnings coming up. Google, same type of thing. This thing's dropping uh, in here. Uh, this line is no longer really valid. Uh, couldn't get going to the upside. So the upside, uh, you know, pretty much of a wedge pattern here uh, continues to hold. Uh, I'm going to guess that if we break to the downside, this is going to get a little ugly. MACD, RSI are falling, breaking the 50 on RSI. Uh, NVIDIA, just another down day. RSI, MACD falling, doesn't look too good either. So again, I keep talking about this potential gap here. Do we get this gap fill? When do we get that gap fill? If we, if we get it, uh, I think it's something to keep an eye on. We got some support coming up in here. We'll see if NVIDIA can hold uh hold out and then tesla boy tesla looking bad but one of the things that i pointed out today uh in twitter and with the group is on this overall move from this uh april to july high you came back down and today you tested the 618 and held uh so we did break pretty much everything else we're right at the 200 moving average we are over the three ATR, so we are overextended to the downside. But even though we're oversold, we're not done yet. We haven't seen any kind of a reversal. Will the 618 hold, which is all pretty close to this previous support? Will that hold? Will we bounce? Will we move back higher? All right. On Netflix here, uh, we're in this downtrend channel on Netflix. As we did, we broke it. We jumped up. Uh, nothing here on Netflix. Uh, CRM in the uh, descending uh, triangle here. Uh, nothing exciting on CRM. In fact, I, I posted this one today. You got a, a break of the 50 on RSI heading lower. Uh, you got MACD rolling over. You got MACD heading lower and RSI heading lower on the weekly. So this is no bueno on the weekly, no good on the daily. We're going to get to support here right around 200. If 200 doesn't hold, which is also right around the 200 moving average, can get some ugliness on CRM uh, as well. And then let's touch base on AMD because we do still have a put credit spread on AMD. We broke the trend, you know, we broke the channel. Okay. We broke this falling wedge. We came back down. We tested that wedge and then we just really moved sideways. MACD and RSI are falling daily and weekly, although the weekly MACD is not falling. It is moving slightly higher, but RSI is falling daily and weekly with MACD falling on the daily as well. Another PSAR reversal signal today. There's a ton of those. In fact, if we take a look on our scans, I believe we have a PSAR bearish reversal scan. And let's take a look at that today and see if uh, see if the scan will pick up anything uh, for it. I'll just let it chew on this for a minute or two after hours, but we should still be able to get this rolling. 
Okay, there we go. Just took a while to load. I mean, look what look at some of the names that click that hit a piece our bearish reversal today. I can't even go into all of these names, but this is just today. Apple, Adobe, AMD, Amazon. Okay, keep we'll keep going. Uh, American Express, Bank of America, uh, all piece our reversals today. Uh, let's keep going down and see who else we run into here. CRM, CrowdStrike. Okay, so CrowdStrike, another one. Uh, piece our bearish reversal. CVS, Deer. Let's keep going. Um, Electronic Arts. Uh, let's see what we got. First Solar, Fubo, uh, Google. Big big names uh, on here. Honeywell, Intel, J.P. Morgan today now this not a good looking chart uh on jp morgan this downtrend in full swing piece our reversal uh let's keep going uh so key corp another bank regional there we go uh you know lift which i don't know why i'm even bothering with lift microsoft another one big name uh in there octa oracle palo alto I can go on and on this to see what else is in there. Um, Regions Financial, so another regional bank. Schwab breaking down. Piece our bearish reversal today. These take a while to 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 get fixed. Uh, let's keep by driving and seeing anything else we see. Uh, Twilio, uh, Tractor Supply uh, up in here. Uh, upstart. So this is one that a lot of people watch for big moves. Uh, that's also looking ugly to the downside. Uh, you know, U.S. Bank Corp. So again, lots of banks, uh, Western Alliance banks, uh, you know, Weight Watchers, WW uh, in here, Zscaler. Uh, so there's a lot of PSR bearish reversals here. Let's move off of that, but it's something to keep an eye on. And then let's take a look at our account uh, on the day today. So if we can, let's jump in and take a look at what the account looks like uh, here. And we actually had a pretty good day on our account. So uh, a good positive day on the account. Let's jump in, see what happened. All right, here we are on 1020. Uh, our deltas moved up on this down move. So when you drop 50, 60 points in a session, Okay, you're going to go down. So dropping 54 points on the day, it's going to pop that delta up. So delta popped up, still 0.16, still within our range. Uh, over here on theta, 2292, giant theta, probably too much theta. Uh, you know, we recovered quite a bit of net lick uh, today. So back up to 289, we're just yo-yoing up and down and up and down, just hanging in this range as these markets move. Uh, BP popped up a bit today. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. 80 uh, is a little high, uh, but with the volatility being at the highs that it's at, I think that's pretty good. Uh, and then today we popped another 550 bucks to the good. So we ended the week up 5,710 bucks on the week. Most markets are down. In fact, if you take a look, uh, let's take a look at what's, take a look, what SPY do for the week for the five days. So SPY down. Uh, just fractionally uh, on the week, or on the week, but uh, you know, almost three percent. So spy down three percent on the week, but we were up five thousand seven hundred and ten bucks uh, on the week. So pretty good overall. And if you look at where our net lick was last week to where our net lick is this Friday, we're actually up a net lick five thousand bucks as well. Uh, so great realized gains this week. We're up to forty four sixty eight, almost a point and a half already. Uh, through the 20th on uh, here. What did we close today? Uh, let's jump in. First thing that happened this morning, we woke up and we found that one of our naked puts in oil had closed. $380 winner in eight days. 50% winner, 11% return on capital. I love these naked puts uh, in oil right now with the volatility so high. Uh, we did uh, lose on this call butterfly on Meta that we had on. We actually had a 60, 70, 80% winner going on this one. And then Meta just reversed and took us out. So we closed this thing out today for a loser. So we dropped 380. So we kind of wiped out that CL one. And then we had two zero DTE trades on. So the market was in a down move early. 
And that's what we had seen. That's what we told our members. Uh, and we weren't going to touch anything in the account this morning. Uh, we didn't put these trades on till 1030 and then 1130. So 1030 on one of them, 1130 on the other. And those were uh, not necessarily the lows of the day, but pretty close to the lows of the, of the day. Uh, at 1130, when we put the, or I'm sorry, at 1030, when we put the first one on, uh, markets were down to about 43.39. And then at 11.30 on the other one, 42.20, I'm sorry, 42.39 and then 42.30. And then the markets rallied all the way up to uh, 42, roughly 60, 42.59. Uh, and we were able to get out of both of those about the same time. So two nice winners, 300 on one, 250 on another. So overall, good positive day, 550 bucks to the good, uh, even though we had a loss on a meta. Uh, butterfly today. Uh, overall, doing really, really well. If we look at our zero DTE trading, I posted this earlier today. Uh, if we count today's two trades that we have in here, since August, so we started a new strategy in August. So we've gone back, going back to August. These are all our trades in August. We were 10 and 0 in August, 16 and 1 in September. And right now we're 15 and 2 uh, in October. Uh, using the total margin that we've used the entire time, uh, anyhow, we didn't use it all at one time, uh, but we've generated $8,495 in zero DTE trades, uh, which is giving us a return of an average return of about one and a half percent a day. So, or per trade, one and a half percent per trade on our capital, which is fantastic. 41 winners, three losers, 93% win rate. I've been trading this strategy pretty small you can see most of these are smaller trades uh in here there are a couple butterflies but mostly spread trades around the five contract and then up to 10 more recently but so we've been starting small and we'll start to increase now uh that i think we got it rolling a bit but our average margin on experimenting here has been about twelve thousand dollars per trade generating 193 bucks per trade uh, on on that margin. So we're only using a little bit of margin. That's, you know, that $12,000, that's not even a, that's basically a five contract trade. Uh, so if we start to increase the size like we did today, you start to see some significantly larger winners. Since we moved to 10 contracts uh, back here on the 18th, uh, you know, our average winnings now are closer to like 360 bucks or something like 350 bucks or so. So we made $2,000 just in the last two days, the 18th and the 19th and the 20th, I'm sorry, three days. Uh, so this week, good week overall, $2,000 certainly helps offset uh, some of the net lick issues and we're rocking and rolling here. All right. Uh, there's our uh, recap. There's where we are. Great week, 5,710 bucks to the good. If you like the video, click the like button, go ahead and uh, subscribe to this. Uh, if you're not in the Discord, please come and join us. See what we're doing. We're helping everybody make some money. Uh, we're doing fantastic. We had a fantastic trading session uh, today. Good up day. Uh, gained back about $7,000 in net lick and then booked some more winners. So all winners here for the last two weeks. I haven't had a losing trade now since all the way back on October 3rd. So since October 3rd, okay, we have booked $9,000 in straight winners with uh, all winning trades since then. So doing fantastic. Come and join us. See what we're doing. You guys take care. Stay safe out there. Have a great weekend. We'll see everybody next week. Bye-bye.